With body position and flow, this section is actually looking at the parts of riding that link the major techniques together. Quite often overlooked, you find that if you look towards various bumps and obstacles on the trail as positive things to get speed from, then you can throw in your manualing or the technique of pumping the trail to gain speed. And not only will you stay in balance, it means you can go quicker and you can actually generate a lot of momentum when you're riding. So this section just puts everything together and just shows you how you can actually think about some of the easier parts of the trail between the corners and the drop-offs and the roots and the rocks. This is the first point in, in Spooky Woods where I've started a quad sun to feel it because you, you're starting to have to put the power down because you've lost so much. And, ah. By this point you shouldn't have had to pedal that much. Yeah, I realised that. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. What we've been trying to get Chris here to do is uh, maintain a very stable upper body and all the movements happening from his arms and legs and it's all timed perfectly with the trail. So as the trail drops away, he's extending his arms to push the front wheel down and then he's extending his legs from the quads to push the back wheel down. So not only is there complete balance all the way through, you know, weight stays evenly distributed over the front and back wheels, so there's no big head banger. And there's, uh, <laughs> there's, no, uh, there's no loss of control whatsoever, but equally, he's also picking up speed without having to pedal. So when you combine that with the braking before corners and, and accelerating through corners and, um, and the sort of going straight off drops, when you put it all together on the trail, you know, this is a Spooky Woods, a really famous red route here at Glentress, you find that you'll hardly have to pedal. It's only the really long flat sections you actually have to pedal for because the speed you get out of corners and the speed you can pick up through sort of pumping as it's called over these sort of bumps in the terrain. Even if these are just single bumps, we chose this because it uh, exaggerated the movement, but it's... Um, it's a really, really good skill to have. And it means that although this is very manicured, even if this is very rocky and rooty, it's still the same technique. It's moving your body in time with the terrain. You'll actually generate speed from the trail by doing this. And, and hopefully, you know, you'll notice that. And I've, I've noticed that with Chris's riding already. Is that he's actually, he's certainly not losing any speed. Even though some people see these as obstacles, you should, you should view these kind of smooth humps almost as parts that you can actually pick up momentum from actually see them as good things. It's just generating it's generating momentum. So you've got a slight rise, but that also then means you've got a, a steeper gradient off the back side of it. So by timing your movement with a pushing of the front wheel down the, the steeper part of the, the gradient, and then the back wheel to follow th through pushing through your legs, you're actually increasing the speed of the bike across the terrain. You're actually using that steeper part of the ground to pick up speed for the, the flatter part that follows. Not as easy as it looks, children. Taking on these rocks, you've got to be quite careful because near the top of the climb, the rocks aren't so much a, a, a clear step, a vertical step, but, but more of a sloping rock. So the, the traction is very minimal. And it's just like braking on a descent. You've got to apply pressure only when you have the maximum grip. So on something like this, you wouldn't want to apply maximum pressure through the pedals when your back wheel is sitting on the least grippy part of the trail. So, you know, just pausing and allowing the, the tire to bite into the dirt at the top and then applying more pressure very gently through the pedals. That's how you get up them. Yeah, you use a weight shift you know, to, to move the bike and let the bike continue rolling underneath you and then start sort of feeding the power in as the grip becomes greater. Yeah, so the, the lift, the balance in the lift is crucial and then that forwards movement again, sort of very much in balance is absolutely vital too. But then the actual success in actually making it up the step and, and moving on to the next part of the trail is very much in doing that movement very clearly, very balanced, and then just feeding in the power at the right point. Remembering, it's like three different bits in one. You kind of put your, pull your weight forward, let the back wheel track up, and then gently put the power on once you actually get traction underneath your back wheel. Get any one of those slightly out of sequence and it doesn't quite go according to plan, but if you do, then it's all right. 
kind of just picking out spots with my eyes, you know, it's kind of trekking up the, the trail, kind of thinking, right, I could just do that there and then just pick that up out there, you know, just getting the sighting my points, I guess, you know, picking out the bits where I was going to put in a couple of pedal strokes and picking out the spots where I was just going to, you know, go easy, that kind of thing. Certainly from, from watching, from my point of view, that was a very smooth, very gentle climb. It wasn't any slower, but much more in balance. It never looked like he was going to lose traction or slide off the side of the hill. So because people are quite often scared of routes, one of the first things they do is try and avoid them. And uh, a really common occurrence is to be turning through route sections and not drawing straight lines. And if you couple that with extra braking because there's a bit of tension or a bit too much force through the bars because you're not quite relaxed enough, then you'll probably find you'll slip through and maybe crash. Whereas if you actually just hit the route square on and, and don't brake and look through the section towards the exit, then you're usually nine times out of ten pretty, pretty successful. You can tell on a section like this straight away where people become intimidated and where they tend to apply their brakes and choose the wrong line. Firstly, because you've got two really large routes, it can look very scary on the entrance. The line that sends you up and over the route actually partly misses this large route here. And you can see from the state of it that a lot of riders hit this either with their chain rings or with their tires. And it's actually caused a lot of damage to the bark. But to be honest, you should never actually be in this part of the trail anyway because you've got all this nice smooth dirt here. So remember, setting up, you want to be on the outside of the trail, doing a slight corner, turning up towards the bank for the landing, but that will also allow you, even if you didn't have enough speed, to avoid this route here. Even if you don't have enough speed to jump it, just treat it like any normal route section. So you see the low line down here is completely devoid of roots and that's probably the reason why most people choose it. But at this point you can see there's a lot of braking going on. There's a couple of big holes forming which is actually exposing quite a lot of big bumps. And you're also introducing an extra corner. If you were to look at the exit of this section, you'll see that suddenly you have to do a right hand turn up and around this tree. Now if you can be confident with roots, there's no reason why on the entrance to the section you can't bear slightly right on the trail and head up and over all these routes, making sure you're off the brakes, making sure your body position is correct, and it actually completely straightens out this section of trail. And the less corners you have, the faster you can go, and the easier it is. Again, on many black runs that you come across, you'll find rock gardens and loose rock sections. Rather than looking at your front wheel and riding very reactively, you want to look towards the section N, and in this case it's a left-hand corner, and think about what line will set you up for that corner and what will give you the easiest line through it. It'll make your life a lot easier, and therefore probably make your riding become much more in balance, and you'll carry more speed too. So, for something like this, I would come in on the main line on the inside, I would come in through here, but as I'm looking further down the trail, rather than just looking at my front wheel, I can see that there's a left-hand corner, and therefore start to try and get to the right-hand side of the trail, again relating it to any switchback or flat corner, and that gives me a good line. So steep, loose rocks, very common in Welsh trail centres, quite a lot of northern Scottish trail centres, and again, uh, on this section, dis displays that very well. The main lines you can see, or that people tend to avoid all these loose rocks on the left and they create a big left hand corner an inside and an outside line and you can actually see a lot of these very fixed very sharp rocks in the trail surrounded by a few smaller ones when you're on a section like this it's very important to minimize cornering as much as possible so you want to try and pick a very straight line through it again when you come into the section looking down the trail towards the exit of the section 
and drawing a straight line will help you a lot with that. So there's two lines that we've chosen here. The first is the main line, which introduces a couple of corners. As you can see, the exit's a bit tighter, so I'm having to turn more on the looser rocks. And I'm having to struggle a little bit more down the section because it's a very gradual left-hand corner. And on such a wide section of trail, there's nothing wrong with making it a completely straight line. So, from the entrance, I've just kept my line quite wide. I've not been put off by all these loose rocks. And I've maintained balance and stability by minimising my braking. So my body position is very relaxed. I'm trying to keep my braking relatively equal between front and back and that allows the tyres to roll over the rocks and not fight against the gradient and fight for grip. So a gradual pick up of speed down the section you'll find that it will increase your balance. It also then opens out the corner at the bottom for me. The bike's probably going to roll around on the rocks a little bit as the tyres flip over from one side to the next. But allow the bike to move around underneath you, relax your arms, relax your legs, think of soft elbows and soft knees and the bike will inadvertently come out in a straight line. If the bike starts to slide don't fight it too much and the last thing you should do is pull on your brakes. The roots, right in the middle of the section, they look very off-putting. There's some rocks on the entrance as well which again can put you off. In actual fact, hitting these sections of trail off the brakes, so you do your, your, your slowing down coming into the section, and then just relaxing and using your body weight, moving from the hips and straight lining it all the way through. So I chose a line that was very close to the, the inside of the first corner, mm -hmm. which then set me up to be inside of the second corner and inside of the last drop. So in actual fact, I made maybe one corner tops out of the entire section, whereas with yourself, you chose a, very, a, a series of very small corners. So just by relaxing, letting the bike roll through off the brakes, I carried a lot of speed through the section, didn't have to put that much effort in. Because I wasn't braking and I was relaxed, the bike was able to roll up and over the obstacles below me. The roots were absolutely fine. I hit them perpendicular, I hit them square on. I also hit them quite close to the stumps where they're quite straight, so there's no issues with traction. And I just basically lined up on the way in, looked down through the section, and just let the bike roll in a straight line. What did you think? What did you think about that section? Didn't actually? feel particularly bad. Didn't feel particularly. Okay. Yeah. I'd say you looked a little bit off balance. There was a, like when you came in off that first stump, when you came in off these roots, your back wheel was lifting up and over, and then again on the last drop on the way at the section, it all relates back to moving your hips. So as the bike rolls up and over something, you move your hips back to correspond to the changing gradient. So particularly through a technical section like this, you're always adjusting. It's a very dynamic way of riding. So as you can see, Ruri came into the left hand side of these rocks and made this opening corner quite big, which, you know, in a normal situation, in a normal corner, that's the right thing to do, set up wide. But in this circumstance, when you've got a long straight following it, you actually want to try and straighten off all the corners and make lots of little corners into one big one or, or a straight section. So rather than coming wide, I came in tight to this stump here. I then ran my wheels quite close to this stump which then allowed me to go straight through this, the trail. My bike was going straight at this point, so there was no turning, there wasn't too much body movement. Carrying your speed through section like this is absolutely is vital. Definitely a bit of rolling speed will allow you to get over routes. Routes like here, where you've got a, a little bit of rise in the trail, a little bit of speed and a little bit of momentum will just allow your bike to carry up and over. But you have to make sure you're off the brakes and you're very balanced and relaxed at the same point. Not braking will help your relaxation, but equally that little bit of speed and momentum will carry you through sections like this, more so than most people think. Almost. Weight wasn't quite right and there's a little bit too much rigidity in his arms there, so when he hit that, those two big roots mid-section, the front wheel bobbled around a bit, which then put him off at the end. Set up and actually hitting the first route was very good. That was a bit closer to it that time, but not quite there though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wasn't sure where I hit the second route, I think that was a bit too far over. Just a little bit stiff in the arms as well, like yeah. your weight was a little bit too far back. Right. And because you were stiff in the upper body there, and you weren't really just moving with the trail, when you hit that route, it bounced you offline. Whereas when I went through the, the route, just the bike absorbed the route. I, yeah, sucked it up, exactly. But yeah, that was the right line. It was just, you got the very last bit wrong just because you came off that route with me. Mm. I reckon you can get that. It's coming again. Oh yeah! 
Much better. Well, what we did just to help Ruri out, just just to begin with, and get a feel for the the line, just dropped his saddle by an inch or two, and that way just gave him that ability to move his weight a little bit more. And then when he came through the section, he was very relaxed, very little braking. Uh, looked through the section and uh, got it perfect, I'd say. How did that feel in comparison to the first time you did it? Yeah, just a lot looser, kind of like holding on for grim, grim death or grim life, one or the other, first time round, but just kind of progressively relaxing as I got line and knew where I was going, I guess. It's a much better line though. You know, you were about a foot, I'd say, from your, from your initial line choice, when you looked at it and chose your own line, I'd say you were about a foot to the inside on the first corner, you were about two feet to the left on the second corner, and then because you'd straightened out the first part, you'd actually set up for the last drop much better, so you actually got the exit better too. So, mm. you know, visibly from, from where I was standing, you were more relaxed and you carried so much more speed through it on the yeah, last Yeah, yeah, it felt a lot faster. Yeah. And it's, nice. there's loads of bits of trail of black routes all over the place and red routes that just have little bits in them that you can actually just go straight through. And it's just learning to approach sections like that, thinking of that line choice all the time. Yeah.